Hello, welcome to another office hour of、uh, Math 449. And today we're still gonna solve some Python interview questions for beginner. So let's start the、uh, code signal. All right.、Um, so we open up. RK, still an intro.、Um, we're at the island of knowledge. I like how Cosigno kind of puts up names. For example, this is Rain. The reason. Let me open up my simple mouse locator. So right here it says reigns of reason, and this is island of knowledge. And we're here. Mind sweeper. Okay. <laughs> In the popular mind sweeper game, you have a board with some minds, and those cells that don't contain a mind have a number in it that indicates. The total number of minds in the neighbor in the neighboring cells.、Um, starting off with some arrangement of minds, we want to create a mind sweeper game setup. For this matrix, for this Boolean matrix,、uh, the output should be one two one two one one and one one one. Okay.、Uh, for example.、Uh, This cell, it has one mind in the neighboring cells, so its number should be one. Uh huh. So it's a, it's a list, it's a matrix. It doesn't have to be a okay. It's a rectangular matrix. It doesn't have to be a square matrix. All right, and what we want to do is we want to get the neighbors. Let's copy down the matrix. Let's start VS Code. But uh, uh, as usual, I still want to use NumPy. But uh, let's uh, let's still use、uh, interactive Python.、Um, This is our matrix. Oh, my bad. All these should be、um, who should be capitalized. That's right. And similarly,、uh, the false, the false should be capitalized. All right. Okay. No. So this is a this is a Boolean matrix,、um, represented by a list of which in which each entry is another list. So we have a big list. For example, if we want to get the matrix length, we will get a three instead of a nine. And then each entry、um, of the matrix is another. List. This is like list of lists to represent matrices. And、uh, what we want to do is we want to return. For example,、uh, if we if we look at this entry, we want to we want to return the number of trues in its neighbors, median neighbors. For example, let me let me try this. See if it's good. For example, for the first entry, 
Uh, we just do some matrix. Um, let me let me first try NumPy. For example, if I do NumPy array uh, matrix and then to list. <laughs> oh wait, sorry, I have to do this. Can I return the list? Okay, I, I can return the list. All right. Okay, let me convert it to NumPy array first. Matrix equals NumPy array matrix. And now, first we initialize, for example, the output. What's the name of the output? Um, let's uh, let's do indicator. Indicator equals numpy zeros like matrix. Okay. And then what happens is what we want to do. Uh, let's do D type. Can I do D type? Equals int. Um, okay. And for i in. So this is matrix shape. Um, zero. Oh, actually, the original list should be easier because the uh, for loop would be natural. That's right. So uh, it would be. Um, for yeah let me without initialize it to uh, that so for example let's just do this list and for i in matrix this should be for row in matrix for row in matrix uh for car in rows mm -hmm. for example that this is a so right now uh if I do break, let's print call, we should get true, which is the first entry, uh, the first column of the first row, right? Oh, wait, no. Oh, the break is there. Um, okay, because the break is not uh, the outer iteration. Okay, right, so it's true. What I want to do is, uh, um, for example, and we do want to enumerate, okay, for um, row index, row in enumerate matrix. Um, uh, for call index or in enumerate because we want to get uh, the index to locate its neighbors um, otherwise I don't know how to retrieve the neighbors just based on the entry can I do that let me try uh, to see what matrix has it has a uh, copy count extend Insert, pop, remove. What does pop do? Reverse, sort, list, pop. Okay. Can I do pop? Fast, fast, fast. What does pop do? List, pop, Python. Remove the item at the given index and returns the removed item. Take a single argument. Oh, I see. Okay. Essentially. Okay. I see. 
yeah it doesn't it doesn't help it doesn't help us we still want to get the index and once we have the index for example um we do want to count so for uh for the for the first index and for the last index for example if if uh if the column index um Okay, so if the column index is uh, um, is zero, uh, what we need to do is we don't count, um, we don't count, um, we don't want to count its left neighbors. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now I, 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 I got an idea. We should first pad the matrix. Yeah. We, we should first pad. We should first pad the matrix by, um, by a row of false. That's right. We should first do that. Mm -hmm. And then what we want to do is we should first pad the matrix. Let me explain the idea. What we want to do is we first we pad the matrix. So what we want to get is a matrix padded. We want to uh, write write a function to first pad the matrix so that, uh, uh, for example, this is like. Uh, with false. All right. So we pad the first row and last row with false. And we also pad the first column. Whoops. With false. False. No, oh, it should be five. Okay. So if three, we should get five. In this way, we don't have to consider um, if it's a first or last entry. We directly, we directly run our function um, in the interior entries. Then we're good because the exterior entries we. Uh, are all false, so they don't count into um, the number of mines in the neighborhood. I, I do believe this this would be the the fastest solution, but uh, um, but I don't. I, I literally I don't know how to do um, list in an efficient way. So let me still do um, let me still do uh, NumPy. If we have this matrix and then the padded matrix, uh, matrix padded would be um, first. Let's initialize um, zero like. Can I can I do bool? Zero like matrix. D type is bool. <laughs> can I do that? Oh, I can. This is interesting. Matrix padded. Oh, it is. Okay. I, I can't do that. Let me do zeros. And what I would do is um, uh, matrix shape zero plus one and uh, um, matrix shape one plus one. Okay. And now matrix padded should be a padded matrix. For example, oh, plus two, my bad. We should be, be uh, plus two because uh, um, we have uh, one row and one column at each end. And then we just uh, set uh, matrix uh, padded one, two, minus one. One, two, 
minus one as our original matrix. And let's print matrix padded. You see, uh, right here we have the middle ones are the yeah, and then we just then we just run our iterations um, in like uh, uh, padded matrix. So okay, let me let me try let me try um, let me try this. Print. Uh, for example, let me print. Let me print call. All right, and then we break after one iteration. Um, false. Uh huh. The first one is false. Uh, for example, then we only have to do is uh um. Okay. Then we run our function. So this should be, um, for example, now this should be, um, let me just get rid of uh, this. And for the index, for example, for the row index, it should be in the range of one. Uh, to, I mean, the length of the matrix, but uh, uh, because it's not, uh, um, it's not taken. For example, the length of the matrix, this is one, two, three, uh, sorry, zero, one, two, three. Uh, if we want to retrieve uh, this entry, we should actually add a four, which is the original. Okay, so which is the original number of rows which is original number of rows um, plus one, which is len, which is matrix shape. Um, zero plus one. Okay. And then uh, for, um, then it's, uh, um, for a uh, column index in range one, which is a matrix shape um, and then we have a count, right? So a count is MP zeros like matrix D type is INT, okay um plus one it should be one plus one so this is a number of uh, columns and now what we do is we just uh we just uh, sum up its neighbors okay a simplest would be just a sum so for example it, it it would be it would be uh, count row index uh, car index. Um, so because because this one um, it should be minus one minus one because the count has a one a two less dimensions than that. So we we don't want to mess up the uh, the index. It equals um, the padded matrix, matrix padded. So it's matrix padded and uh, um, it should be row index minus one to row index plus one, comma. Oh, my bad, this should be a bracket. And this is column index minus one. And uh, uh, to 
column index plus one and then we do sum however this does count uh the entry itself then we have to uh minus and we have to minus minus uh itself which is uh um I guess just int. <laughs> oh, let, let me let me try this. Okay, so two minus true. Is it one? <laughs> it's one. Okay. It's kinda alright. So we, we don't have to invoke int. So I guess this these two are the same. <laughs> okay. So it means I can simply just do uh, matrix uh, padded of matrix let me do still do matrix padded row index um and column index all right let's see if it runs oh count is not defined on my bad um okay it it does run and let's see what our count is It's uh, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 0, 1, 1. Let's uh, see if it matches. Apparently not. <laughs> uh, this is this should be 2, right? Let, let me try uh, my... Um... Some, all right. So matrix padded. For example, this entry, I sh I would sum all its neighbors. So somehow th this is uh, this is not right. Um. So, for example, this entry right here, this fourth entry right here, we, sh we should sum up with two. Okay. Let me try, for example, the row index of this is two. Um, two plus one, two, two plus one. Oh, that's interesting. I only get uh, I only get uh, um, a two by two matrix. This is why, of course, row index. I should plus two uh, because it's not uh, uh, achievable. Let me try that. How about now, count matrix? Oh. Okay, now it looks better. One, two, one, two, one, one, and uh, one, one, one. Is that correct? Okay, now it's good. And then we just do count to list. Um, to list, we're good. Oh, I forgot to do the function. And then we're good. Okay, I'm using NumPy. This is like cheating. Um. Okay. I think we I, I can use this uh without numpy. The the big thing is I don't know how to pad a uh non numpy matrix efficiently. Uh, but yeah let me let me just do numpy i guess so let's let's uh let's copy um the code to code signal okay let's fix the indent um let's import numpy import numpy as mp all right so we first we pad the matrix um this is a matrix padded and uh, um we don't use indicator again okay so we use count and for our uh, row index in this and for column index in that and lastly 
uh, we return count to list. All right, let's run some tests. Test passed six out of six. All right, I think this is right, but uh, um, I'm I'm very curious. Like, uh, what's the uh, what's the solution is? Okay, correct. Um, continue. Let's let's back to the question and let's see some uh, top solutions. Pi three. So it's a range len uh, um, matrix and append r equal that. Okay. That's that's very interesting. Return R. All right. Oh, <laughs> it only adds up to something like that. Okay. I guess this is okay. Let's try. And let me fix the indent. So for example, my matrix is still uh, that, is it? Okay, matrix is already an array. Let me just copy this original matrix, which is a list of list. Um, for example, if we read the code, this is first um, in each Let's print R here. Um, okay. The first, the first one is empty list, and then we fill this empty list with, um, with that. So X is zero. Um, that if I plus X, okay. It's greater than zero length and that, then L plus O, okay. Uh, it's essentially check if um, your neighbors are um, within the matrix and then it adds up the neighbors. And RI append L is just, uh, um, for example here, the, uh, this is a list, so you can use list append these entries, yeah. I guess the padded, I, I'm curious if anyone uses padded matrix approach. Oh, <laughs> this one uses padded approach. Um, this one does? Oh, no, 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 it doesn't. So the curve is, uh, the curve is uh, sum. Oh, uh, the comb is lambda if one, if uh, this zero and uh, um, if this and the matrix one else zero. So it, it's like a count. Okay. Lambda i, j and neighbors are sum of that um, minus itself in range rows wow this is very convoluted oh i guess no one uses a padded approach i think i think there there was uh, some padded but i forgot which one um island of knowledge add a border i think it's this one is it Oh yeah, here yeah. it's um it's a padded matrix. So we just add a padded matrix, um, then that's good. And this way, it's native. It's a native. Um, it's a native, whatever. This list implementation. But it's just my, uh, it's just myself because I love use NumPy. 
So we first come up with a padded. Actually, no solution does a padded one. So it's fine. Let's uh, ring a reason. Let's move on. Array replace. Let's read. Uh, um, Give an array of integers, replace all occurrence element to replace with substitution element. For example, uh, input array that element to replace is one, substitution element is three, the output should be three, two, three. Okay, it's not too bad. It's, I think we can do it in, in the line. It's essentially um, output array is that, okay. And uh, um, basically for entry for I in input array for element for E in input array. All right. Um, if E is element to replace, um, we do we output array, we append substitution element. Otherwise, we just append E itself. I guess that's it. Whoops. Append E. I think that's it. Then we return output array. Run test. All right. It's not too bad. Cool. Um, solved in two minutes. <laughs> okay. But this one is pretty straightforward. We just uh, find the elements um, to replace and uh, replace it. Even digits only. What's this? Check if all digits of a given integer are even. For that, the output should be true. Uh, the output should be uh, false. Okay. The first is we want to convert. Okay. So for example, we want to convert um, a digit into, for example, n equals whatever. Um, to let me first add uh, minus whip game. And uh, we first want we want to convert, for example, this with n equal that. Um, we want to convert it to a string, um, or to a list, string n. If we do that, uh, then we can do, for example, we convert it to a list. We do INTI for I in STRN. So we'll get a list um, of uh, numbers, okay? And then we just check if all of them um, is uh, is even, okay, straightforward. Now we do uh, so we do list digits is that, um, and then what we do is um, is even is. Uh, um, is odd Let, let's do is odd um if it's if there is one odd um then it should be false okay so we should return we should do is even okay um i should we, we should do is odd yeah um so we check for example if, if it's odd it means um the digits, for example, the numbers, let's do S, should be um, quotient two, should be should be one, uh, if it's a not number for S in list digits, okay? And then we return, if, um, if it's odd, if the sum of it is odd is zero, then we return um, true. Okay, so we return sum is odd being zero. Uh, 
Okay, submit. This one is straightforward. All right. Um. It seems in this module, this range of reason, the, the problems are in general easier than some of the previous questions, or it's just my impression. Um, variable name. Okay. Correct variable name consists only of English letters, digits and underscores, and they can't start with a digit. Correct variable name consists only of English letters, digit and underscores. Um, they they can't start they can't start with a digit. Check if a given string is a correct variable name. This is true. This is false. This is false. This is a uh, this is false. It has a space. Wow. Um. Variable. You cannot have that. True. A is true. Is true. This is false. How 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 do we detect space? Okay. Um, I don't know how to, how do we detect space? Let's Google it. Python string space character. Oh, there is a. I think I just saw, for example, there is a, is a space. So let's try it. Um, let's do a variable name, bar name equals space, blah, 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 blah. Um, okay. Uh, bar name zero um, is space. True. <laughs> okay, so there is a is space. Um, I think there is a various var name zero is. So there is is our num is alpha is ask to is decimal is digit is identifier is lower is numeric is printable is upper. What's his identifier? It's false. Um, what about this? Is identifier. True. This is identifier. Okay, how about that? Is identifier. It's false. Okay. That's interesting. Zero. It's false. The zero is digit. Okay. Um, but the underscore is identifier, so it's good. Is A identifier? It's true. Wow. Is dot identifier? It's false. Okay, let's Google what, what are the identifiers. Identifiers string Python. Wow, Google, Google, here's my question and uh, um, and answers the question for me. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but uh, uh, but I, I, I put myself in, I put my, actually, I put myself in mute mode, but, uh, um, oh, wait, I don't want to do that. Let's try this. 
Okay. TXT is identifier. Identifier. A string considered a valid identifier is contained alpha numerical letters. Okay. Underscore. A valid identifier cannot start with the number. A valid identifier cannot start with a number or contain any spaces. Wow. <laughs> we just return. The string is identifier. That's it. Is it? Return name is identifier run test yeah <laughs> python has a built-in method literally for this uh, problem yeah let's submit oh my god it's correct <laughs> i can't believe it okay my bad we we should use an elementary way to do it. Let let's check some of the best. <laughs> so it's use identifier. Let let's see if there is a Okay, match. Ignore case. Oh. Um What's R E? What's IE? There is no IE name, is it? Yeah. IE is not in the namespace. And what well, what's IE? Variable name IE name dot IE ignorance. What is IE? Is identifier. Is alpha is digit. Uh, th this one's better. So first we check. The first one should not be digit. If it's not, and we check, um, it should be um, that. Yeah, I like these, but this problem I don't think is very interesting because it's identifier has already um, solved the problem. And this is alphabetic shift. Uh, it says, uh, given a string, your task is to replace each of the character by the next one in the alphabet. Replace A with B, replace B with C, and uh, replace that let's google what's alphabet i don't want to type 26 letter alphabet hopefully um wow <laughs> google knows me alphabet string okay uh, let's just copy down okay there we go Okay. Um, here we go. Yeah. Here's what I thought this problem would be. So this is replace alphabet. First, let's copy down this a list. This is a list of uh, uh, alphabet. So this is list uh, alpha. What I want to do is I want to add an A here so that it becomes kind of cyclic. This is a very sneaky way of doing that if we want to move. Um, and then what I want to come, oh, what I want to do is we come, come up with the dictionary. So the dict, um, oops. So the dict replace to replace um, is, for example, the key is an empty. First, we set it uh, an empty dict, right? So 
dict replace. We set it up with an empty dict, okay? And what happens is uh, we fool the alphabet. Um, for I and uh, uh, A in enumerate list alpha, um, we set it like the following, we dict replace, and its key should be, um, its key should be uh, alphabet, and the letter um, it replace is list alpha, I plus one. Okay, let's try that. Oop, something's wrong. List index out of range. Why? Um, oh, okay, okay. Um, okay. Hmm. Okay, if I should do this, if uh, I is equal to length of list alpha minus one, we just break the loop. Still? Oh, oh no, no, no. We should add it here. My bad. I think now we're good. And if we check the dictionary to replace, we print it, dict replace, we should get uh, something like that. Yep. You see A is replaced with B and B is replaced with C and uh, C is replaced with D. Yeah. Okay, let's see uh, the output, what the output should be. It should be a string. That's right. It should be a string, input string. Uh, now we check the input string is crazy and we want to replace it. For example, for I in, um, for S in input string, um, I should do enumerate position and S in enumerate uh, input string, whoops. Mm. Input string position uh, replace. We replace it with replace. Um, ready? So, for example. Um, We replace s all right uh so for example the input string is crazy right and now we input string say we want to replace the zeroth entry we replace um c with with the an input string it's still crazy okay i see um okay it should be we we, we should directly so input string position should equals that's right the dict replace uh of s String object does not support item assignment. Okay. Oh yeah, I I I I I, I should still use uh, I should still use um, replace. Yeah.
Okay, so input string. Replace C, th C with D. This is okay, but uh, but th this would run into problem if, uh, uh, for example, we replace C with D, we replace D with um, A. Okay, we should we should. Oh, now I I see what uh, this does. All we should do is we start from Z. So we replace Z with A. And then we'll, we will see problems. Um, input string replace. What we like to do is uh, we would like to replace in a consecutive manner. Um, uh, why would I do that? So we, we can this to list, right? Do, do we have a string and to list? Do we have a list? Okay. Um, I should first convert it to a list, of course. So uh, list LST. equals s for s in input string all right and then we enumerate instead of that we enumerate this list and the list position is we do that we try yeah this should be good so now we check the list it's exactly what we want to do then we convert this list to strings how do we do that is we use join join um, so, for example, we do S for S in LST. Oh, my bad. I should use in. Yep, there we go. Okay, not too bad. Um, so we first we copy down this line of code. Um, this is like a whoops. Um, this is how we obtain a dictionary. Like I said earlier, the keys are the letters. Um, the keys are the letters. For example, if if we put the dictionary to replace A, we should return B, okay? And lastly, um, if we put, for example, M, we should get N. And for example, if we have Z, we should get A, okay? And then what happens is we just, uh, uh, we first, we convert the input string to, um, to a list. After we've done this, we convert the input string to list. And uh, um, after we convert it to a list, this position is the index of a string and we just change this position to that. Lastly, we return uh, a list, uh, an empty list join this a list. So S for S in list and we should this should be good. It's not too bad, but uh, um, this answer is kind of long. So I'm very curious what uh, some short answers are. Correct. Okay. We solved six problem today, not too bad. Um, okay, let's back. Let's check some the best solutions. Python 3. Oh my god. 
what what are some of these this is this seems like what chis what chis it's a character it's a function okay so for example what chr ad is what what's that oh it's an error okay for i and s wow i i i so in for i in this string for each in the string we do that let's copy this code okay for i in input string let's print what this is oh that's very interesting which means chr chr is something um do we have help chr returns a unicode string of one character with ordinal oh, of course if we can use unicode it's much easier we just return the uh the unicode position of the string and let's see if there is an elementary way there is not we just do um we still do that. For example, I believe this one order A gives us okay, gives us the position. And for example, B should be ninety-eight, and let's check uh, Z one twenty-two. Um, what's all it does? It's, it should be give some Unicode information. Building function for the module will read the Unicode code point of a one character string. I see. The problem seems pretty specialized at this point. All right. Um, I'm curious what's next task is. It's chest aboard cell color. All right. Let's try to solve it on Thursday. So that's it for today and uh, see you next time.